Hello everyone. So, welcome to the fourth lecture of the module 2, which is the module for nonlinear equations. So, in this lecture, I am going to introduce you another method for solving nonlinear equations, and the method is called fixed point iteration method. Why we say it fixed point iteration method? Because it is based on the concept of fixed point for a given function. In the past three lectures, we have learned about bisection method, then regular falsi method and Newton reaction method. So, in all those methods what we were doing, we are finding the iterations, we are we were establishing an iterative equations and based on the iterative equations, we are finding a sequence which is going to converge to the root of the equation. In Newton Epson method, we were calculating the derivative of a function. However, in earlier method like bisection or regular falsi method, we did not calculate the derivative. Since in Newton Epson method, we are were calculating derivatives and we were doing some extra efforts we were having the assumption that function should be twice differentiable and hence based on that we were getting a good convergence of Newton action method compared to the earlier methods. Now, let us discuss about this fixed point iteration method. So, first of all what is a fixed point? So, the fixed point of a function f of x is a point x such that f of x equals to x. For example, if we have a function f x equals to x square minus x minus 3, then the fixed point of f x are given by f x equals to x that is x square minus x minus 3 equals to x and when we solve it, we can check that we are having two fixed point for this particular equation that is one is 3 and another one is minus 1, because if we calculate f of 3, so it is coming out 3 into 3 9 minus 3 minus 3, so 3 and if we calculate f of minus 1, it is coming out minus 1. So, in general we can say a function fix uh, the fixed point of a function is given by the intersection of this function with the line y equals to x. For example, this function is having these two fixed points. If I take a another function f x equals to sorry, f x equals to sin x. So, x equals to 0 is the only fixed point of this function. Similarly, we can get another function for which we are can have one fixed point, two fixed point or more than two fixed points. For example, if you take the identity function, all the points of this function are the fixed points. Now, based on this concept of fixed point, we will develop our fixed point iteration method. So, let us say we are having a nonlinear equation f x equals to 0. Now, we need to write this function f equals to 0 function f in such a way that I can write it as x equals to g x. In such a way that the fixed point of this particular equation becomes the root of this equation. Means, if this is the equation 1, this is the equation 2. So, the fixed point of the equation 2 becomes the root of equation 1. So, fixed point of 2 is 
द रूट ऑफ वन नाउ इफ आई गिव यू ए नॉन लीनियर फंक्शन एफ ऑफ एक्स आई कैन राइट दिस फंक्शन इन दिस फॉर्म इन सेवरल वेज फॉर एग्जाम्पल कंसिडर ए फंक्शन एफ एक्स x equals to x square minus x minus three equals to zero. So here f of x is x square minus x minus three. So I can write this function as x equals to x square minus three. So here and that is equals to g x. So here g of x is x square minus three. Another way of writing this, I can write this x equals to square root of x plus three, and that is plus minus. So here g x can be square root of x plus three, or g x may be minus of square root of x plus three. so this is my gx so these are the two ways of writing this function fx in terms of x equals to gx we can have several other ways of writing a function x equals to gx now after writing equation 1 into equation 2 then what we will do from the two i will generate an iterative scheme that x of n plus 1 equals to g of xn if x is f or x star is a fixed point of this particular g then what will happen when this sequence or this iteration scheme will converge towards the x star finally this will become x x star equals to g of x star and hence x star is a fixed point of this which gives the root of f x equals to 0 so this particular formula is called the iterative scheme or formula for the fixed point iteration method the only thing we need to take care in this that choice of this function g how to write this g from the given equation f of x equals to 0 so criteria to choose this function g should be given in initial x not then the iterative scheme of this equation or iterations of this equation gives you uh, can be calculated very easily the second criteria for choosing g is the sequence xn is convergent using that particular g and third one is the limit to which sequence xn converges let us say eta it should be a fixed point of gx that is g of eta equals to eta now if we talk about first point that given an initial value of x not using this method we should be able to find out subsequent approximations of xn if you take a very simple example let us say fx equals to x square minus x equals to 0 suppose i need to solve this equation now what will happen if i choose x as Minus of square root of x equals to g x. That can I calculate? I take this x in the right hand side, and then I can take the square root of the both side. So it will be plus square root as well as minus square root. Suppose I take this minus square root. So then my x one will become minus square root of x not. Now this g x is defined only for positive x. or no negative x so if x not is greater than 0 what will happen i will be able to find out 
x 1 which will be a negative number. Now, when I will calculate x 2 that will be minus square root of a negative number which is my coming from the first iteration I will not be able to find out x 2. Hence, I am not able to find out any subsequent approximation of x n and hence we should choose g x in such a way that we can find all the approximation in subsequent iterations of x n. Moreover, the convergence of the fixed point iteration method depends on function g that is how you are choosing your function g and the initial approximation x naught. Now, I am going to explain few of the assumptions for choosing g and the first assumption is g x should belong to the domain of x. That is if x belongs to a closed interval a to b then g x should belong to closed interval a and b. Why I am saying this or why I am taking this assumption that if we have a x naught between a to b then for all n x n should lie in the closed interval a to b because x n plus 1 equals to g of x n and hence x n plus 1 should be defined in the closed interval a to b and it can happen only when your domain of g is between closed inter domain of g is between a to b. The another is g should be a continuous function that is if the nth approximation of x n tending to x star then x star can be written as limit n tending to infinity x n that is equals to limit n tending to infinity g of x n minus 1 since x n equals to g of x n minus 1. Now, since x n minus 1 is a fixed point of g I can write it I can take g out and limit n tending to infinity x of n minus 1 and it is equal, equal to g of x star. Now, this is very important assumptions and this is a condition of the choice of g which subsequently tells us that whether the method is going to converge for this particular choice of g or not. So, the iterative function g is differentiable on a b in addition there exists a constant k between 0 to 1 open interval 0 to 1 such that the absolute value of g prime x should be less than equals to k for all x belongs to a to b a, a, interval a to b. Hence, I can write this condition like this I can state like this the absolute value of g prime x for all x belongs to a to b should be less than 1. If you are having such a g then your fixed point iteration scheme converge for any initial approximation chosen from the interval a to b. Moreover, we are having a condition on the uniqueness of fixed point that is assume that g is a continuously differentiable on a closed interval a to b and the domain of g is in closed interval a to b with lambda that is the maximum value of g prime x for all x belonging to a to b and this value is less than 1 then x equals to g x has a unique solution x star in a b that is the fixed point will be unique in this particular interval a to b. The another one is for any choice of x 0 in this interval a to b with x n plus 1 equals to g of x n n equals to 0 1 2 etcetera. The sequence x n will converge to the this unique fixed point. Further the absolute value of x n minus x star will be less than equals to lambda raised to power n x 0 minus x star because 1 lambda will be added in each iteration 
like x n minus x star will be less than equals to x n minus 1 lambda times x n minus 1 minus x star less than equals to lambda square x n minus 2 minus x star and so on and that will be less than equals to lambda raised to power n upon 1 minus lambda into absolute value of x 1 minus x 0 and limit and tending to infinity the error in n plus 1 iteration upon error in n th iteration will be equals to g prime x star. It means when n is quite large the limit value of the error in n plus 1 iteration that is g n plus 1 upon e n should be less than 1. Because we are taking this x star will be in this interval and we are taking lambda as the maximum value of g prime x for all x in this interval. So, x star will be somewhere in this particular interval and hence this value will be always less than 1. So, limiting value of this e n plus 1 will be less than e n strictly less than. After this let us take few examples which we will solve using this fixed point iteration method. So, consider the equation f x equals to x cube minus 7 x plus 2 equals to 0. This, uh, this equation is having root in 0 to 1 because when we test it at x equals to 0 it is coming out 2 which is a positive number when I test it at x equals to 1. So, f of 1 coming out to be 1 minus 7 plus 2 that is minus 4 which is a negative number. So, here f 0 into f 1 is a negative number and according to intermediate value theorem there will be a root between 0 to 1. We can write this equation as x equals to 1 upon 7 x cube plus 2. So, we will have g x equals to 1 upon 7 x cube plus 2 and you can see the function g belongs to 0 to 1 will be always 0 to 1. So, domain equals to range it means that whatever domain you are having for x the same domain I am having for g of x that is our first assumption in this method. Moreover if you check g dash x that will be always less than 3 upon 7 for all values of x between 0 to 1 thus by the convergence condition of the fixed point iteration method the sequence x of n plus 1 equals to 1 upon 7 x n cube plus 2 will converge to a root of x cube minus 7 x plus 2 equals to 0. That is the fixed point of this equation will give you the root of this equation. The algorithm works like that. Suppose we are having equation f x equals to 0. First we write the given equation in the form g x equals to x. Then we start with an initial approximation say x naught and then we find a successive it approximation of x n in di uh, different iterations. Now let us take another example of fixed point iteration method. Suppose we are having an equation that is the fourth order polynomial equals to 0 and polynomial is x 4 minus x minus 10. So, consider g of x as 10 upon x 3 minus 1. So, by the fixed point method the iterative formula will become x of n plus 1 equals to 10 upon x n cube minus 1 for n equals to 0 1 2 we start with an initial approximation x naught equals to 2 and then x 1 will become 1.429, x 2 will become 5.214, x 3 will become 0 0.071, x 4 will become minus 10.004, x 5 will become uh, minus 9.97 into 10 raised to power minus 3, then x 6 will become minus 10, x 7 will become minus 9.99 into 10 raised to power minus 3, x 8 will become minus 10 and then it will 
always oscillate between minus 9.999 raised into 10 raised to power minus 3 and minus 10. And we shows that the iterative process will never converge. So, what is the problem here? The problem is if you see your g x, so here we are choosing g x as ten upon x q minus one. If I find out g prime x, it will become minus 10 into x 3 x cube minus 1 raised to power minus 2 into 3 x square. So, basically I can write it minus 30 x upon x 3 minus 1 whole square. Now, if you check that when x is 2, so when x is 2, it will become minus 30 2 upon 7 square which is minus 30 into 4 upon 49. So, hence g prime absolute value of g prime 2 will be somewhere 120 upon 49 and which is greater than 1. So, this choice of g does not fulfill the requirement of the convergence and hence we are getting such a behavior of the iterative scheme that it is not going to converge. If we take another function g for the same equation x 4 minus x minus 10 equals to 0. So, another way of writing g x is x plus 10 raised to power 1 upon 4, then the fixed point iteration formula becomes x n plus 1 equals to x n plus 10 raised to power 1 upon 4. Again, if I start with x naught equals to 2, so my x naught is 2. I got x 1 as 1 1.861, x 2 at 1 1.8558, x 3 as 1 1.8559, x 4 as 1 1.8558 and then x 5 as 1 1.8558 which is same up to 5 decimal places in these two iterations and hence my fixed point iteration method converts to the root with an accuracy of 5 decimal places in just 5 iterations. And this is happening because if you calculate here for this particular choice of g x. So, here I am taking g x is 1 x plus 10 raise to power 1 upon 4. So, here g prime x will become 1 upon 4 into x plus 10 raised to power 3 by 4. If I calculate g prime 2, it will become 1 upon 4 into 1 upon 12 raised to power 3 by 4 and this number will be less than 1 and hence the condition for the convergence on the choice of g is fulfilled here and that is why matter is converging quite faster. If we take another choice the third choice of g that can be written as x plus 10 raised to power half upon x 
then the fixed point iteration formula becomes x of n plus 1 equals to x n plus 10 raise to power half upon x n and here let us start with x naught equals to 1.8 which is quite close to the exact solution. Earlier we were taking 2, but now let us take 1.8. So, here x 0 is 1.8, x 1 will become 1.9084, x 2 will become 1.80825. Continuing in the same manner, we see that the solution converts to 1.8555 in 98 iterations. So, in the earlier method we were taking the initial solution a bit far away from the root still we are getting the convergence in just 5 iterations here we are getting initial solution close to the exact root, but we are getting a solution with a large number of iterations. However, method is converging hence the choice of g because and it, it is happening because if you find out g 3 prime x at x equals to 1.8 it is just close to 1 means it is near ar around 0.9 something and hence we are taking more number of equations. Hence in this method choice of g is very important for the convergence you need to check the condition absolute value of g prime x less than equals to 1 for all x belonging to interval a to b for each g and which is giving the value very less than 1 or a smaller one we will use that one a smaller one as well as less than 1 for further iterations and based on that we will use our fixed point iteration method. Moreover this method is quite simple in formulation if we leave out the choice of g. So, thank you very much for this lecture. In the next lecture, we will learn about the solution of system of nonlinear equations. Like in module 1, we have solved the system of linear equations. Here, we will take the system of nonlinear equations. If we take the system of nonlinear equations, we will have nonlinear equations involving more than one variables, and therefore, we will modify our Newton Epson method as well as fixed point iteration method for solving such type of systems of nonlinear equations. Thank you once again.